I really don't know what I'm going to be doing for my 40,000 subscriber special. Ah, uh, I'm pretty proud of that video. Although, why did I tease them with Knuckles Chaotix? I'm not really into that game. Nor have I ever completed it. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't think it's going to be like another year until I reach 40... thousand subscribers. Oh, what am I gonna... Oh, God, you're here already! Right, okay, yes. Let's get on with that comparison then. Yeah, I'm not buying the Power 32X as well, not at that price. Fortunately for me, my good friend Stephen UK lent me his for this review. Thanks mate, I'll definitely make sure to return this to you without a ransom. <laughs> so here we are, by now you probably know what to expect from this series, and here's a playlist in case you don't. Having said that, there's a massive variance we've never encountered before up until now. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Get out of here! You'll immediately notice that there's no widescreen effect in the PAL footage. No, no, I haven't messed up. Before I tell you the reason for this, it's time for me to go a little in-depth with the hardware itself. And to help me make this as simple as possible, I'm going to backtrack to Sonic 1 for the Mega Drive, also known as the Genesis in North America. NTSC consoles have a vertical resolution of 224 pixels. To not strain your eyes, let's natively upscale that four times, which is now at 896 pixels in height. This right here is an integer scale. Now, PAL consoles have a vertical count of 240 pixels. Again, let's resize that to 960 lines. PAL got lucky and had a higher resolution screen, with the trade-off being a lower frame rate, as we already know. But most games, like Sonic 1, never took advantage of that extra space. It was mainly a straight port, or even the same ROM for the PAL region, meaning you get that small blank space above and below the gameplay. Now, imagine if you will, this is a digital console with digital cables like HDMI built for your modern TV. The extra unused space for PAL wouldn't matter. The gameplay itself is still using the same 224 pixels as NTSC. That means the game effectively looks exactly the same. However, this is an analog device, used with analog cables to comply for the more traditional CRT TV. In layman's terms, the CRT would just grab the whole resolution and beam it onto the screen. So Sonic 1 using an NTSC console would look like this. Pretty sweet, huh? However, when switching to the PAL machine, the game appears squished because the CRT is also taking that extra blank space into account. Meaning, side by side, the PAL version shows to have what I have dubbed the widescreen effect. Okay, I mean you could mess with overscan settings if your CRT has that sort of thing, but that's opening another can of worms. This is why for my video series, 50Hz has always had its height tightened, because this is how it would have looked like using these consoles back in the day. Sonic 1 never ever put those extra lines to use on a 50Hz contraption. Neither did Sonic 2, Sonic 3 or Sonic CD. Now, with the 32X, the same rules apply. 60Hz is 224 pixels, whereas PAL is 240. So why am I displaying both versions in the same ratio? Well, I already think you know where I'm going with this, but Chaotix took the plunge and used those extra pixels. I hear your gasps. For the first time ever in the series, we have a PAL game that looks better than its counterpart. Still showcasing this in an analog manner, the screen height finally matches, eliminating that widescreen effect that we've been used to. Let's hope the gameplay for an easier look. Notice here where NTSC ends its bottom display? Over here on the PAL side, we've got more to gaze at. This also means PAL has the upper hand of seeing further ahead. Well, perpendicular up and down anyway. You now have a worthy choice to make. Before, it was easy. Go with the higher frame rate, as the option for the advanced resolution was unused. It's not rocket science, is it? But with Knuckles Chaotix, the space is fully populated and may have you contemplating for longer. Higher frame rate? 
or higher resolution. Oh, and just to treat your curiosity, if you want to know how it would have looked like if this was a digital console, here's PAL at its integer scale, which on the 4K TV, 240p, scaled 9 times, fits perfectly and looks absolutely stunning. Take that, NTSC! It's all subjective, but for me, I'd still probably pick NTSC because I'm so used to the frame rate. But it's good to see that PAL has finally upped its game, and has given us a very good dilemma worth thinking about. The choice, my friends, is yours. <sighs> it's just a shame that all the new stuff ends here. For the rest of the differences, they're all excuses we've heard about many times. In 50Hz, the timer is still behind. The physics continuously sluggish, featuring that floaty feeling. Yada yada yada. Now, in my previous videos, I have done some direct comparisons when it comes to representing how leisurely 50Hz can be against its matching part. Like here, 60Hz gets to the title screen first. And here are two demos from each team side by side. It's the same old story as it's always been, so I'm not going to make you wait through all of this, apart from when it comes to the music. Now you might remember, Sonic 2 was the first game in the Sonic franchise to optimise the music for the PAL region, and it was perfect. Sonic 3 did the same, but the new driver's timings were off, and it started to trail behind NTSC. So, does Knuckles Chaotix have the same issue? <laughs> Splendid! The synchronisation here is faultless. And I was going to call it a day there, but then I discovered a fascinating quirk of this title. It's nothing major by all means, but remember when I said that 50Hz utilises that extra resolution? In the bonus stage, it only half attempts it. The background and the mesmerising foreground no longer benefit from the extra room. However, the sprite graphics do. What do I mean by that? Well, check out the 60Hz clip and keep an eye on the objects as they head towards the border. They vanish as they should. Yet in 50Hz, the objects escape the top and bottom of the margin, just for a moment and then they disappear. I mean, it doesn't make a blind bit of difference to the gameplay whatsoever, but I thought it would be interesting to point it out. And honestly, that's everything I can say about the regional differences. Which side do I prefer? Well, honestly, after fully completing this game twice with all six Chaos Rings for the first time ever, I found both to be tedious. And that's because, in my personal opinion, Knuckles Chaotix doesn't have much going for it. Don't get me wrong, it's visually attractive and the music is great, and some of the technical prowess it displays is astonishing. But if you put that to one side, the game gets really repetitive rapidly, and not a lot happens. It's all back and forth and confusing, the levels appear to be lifeless a lot of the time, the bosses are stupidly easy, including the final boss, which was a very anticlimactic ending. To me, it feels like a glorified tech demo. Want me to explain the reasoning behind my thoughts? Well, join me for my live stream in the next couple of days where you get to vote whether I play the PAL or NTSC version. Check the pinned comment for the link to vote. I would put the usual poll card in the video itself, but YouTube being YouTube, seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube took away the feature for me to upload any more of this video.